Welcome to the Tipping Point Show. I'm Jimmy Evans. I'm so glad that you joined me today. And today's program is going to be a little bit shorter because as you're watching this, I'm actually in Washington, D.C. I was invited to come to the Israeli embassy in Washington, D.C. to have a private briefing uh, with the Israeli government, uh, myself and some other leaders that will be there. And one of the reasons that they're doing this is because they, there's so much misinformation going on uh, concerning uh, October 7th. And I, we wrote an article and posted it on endtimes.com talking about a major movement right now that is accusing Israel of planning this entire attack on October 7th, orchestrating the kidnapping and the killing of their own people is a pretext of them invading Gaza, which is absolutely ridiculous. Unfortunately, it's gaining a lot of traction on social media, on TikTok, other places. If there's been a lot of this is going around. Now we're seeing the pro-Palestinian rallies where they're actually saying that Israel is the one who did this. This it, it never. It, they're either saying it didn't happen, or Israel's the one who did it. They're behind all this. You know, when it comes to Israel and anti-Semitism, people just are crazy. And I've said this before, anti-Semitism is not an ideology. It's not a belief, it's a spirit, it's demonic. Because no one can really articulate why everybody hates the Jews. And I'll tell you why everybody hates the Jews is because they came from God, because they hate God. Israel's existence is proof of God's existence. The only nation ever started by God was the nation of Israel. He started it with a man named Abram, who became Abraham. And so Israel's existence proves God's existence, and that's why Satan hates it. And that's why people who are ungodly also hate them. Anti-Semitism today is worldwide. It's like a cancer. It's spread all over the world, college campuses, Europe, America, you know, the, all kinds of people now all over the world, pro-Palestinian rallies, hating Israel, calling for uh, all these the different things that they're saying. But now what they're saying is it didn't actually, it didn't actually happen. Uh, babies weren't beheaded, you know, little girls and old women weren't raped and all these uh, people weren't murdered. And if it did happen, uh, the Jews are responsible for it. So I'm at the end, as you're watching this right now, I'm actually in Washington, D.C., uh, and I'll be at the uh, Israeli embassy, and they're going to show us footage from October 7th, and that's something I'm not looking forward to seeing. But one of the reasons that they want us to see it is because they want to prove that it actually happened, and it was not the Israelis that did it, it was Hamas that did it. And unfortunately, when these attacks happened on October 7th, because of technology and the way that it is right now, they actually were live feeding the killing of the Jews, the unbelievable carnage that happened when uh, over a thousand terrorists invaded in the early morning hours, uh, the kibbutzes and also just the areas around uh, Gaza there. And see, one of the reasons that they weren't expecting this was is because Hamas had been telling the Israel that they wanted to normalize relationships and they wanted to enter into a ceasefire. And Israel's never broken a ceasefire. Anytime that there's a ceasefire between Israel and the Palestinians or Hamas, they've always honored it. Every ceasefire that's been broken has been broken by Hamas or by the Palestinians. So Israel thought that they had peace with Hamas. And in the early morning hours, they came in and just did this unbelievable thing that they did. There's still many hostages that they're holding uh, in an unbelievable way to manipulate uh, Israel, to try to manipulate Israel, but it's not having the intended effect because Israel is still conducting their raids on Gaza uh, and trying to destroy Hamas completely. And they will destroy Hamas, regardless of how long it takes them. They will destroy Hamas. But we're going to be watching this footage and we're going to be uh, also, they're going to be talking to us about, you know, uh, what, what they want us to do. One of the reasons I'll be there is because they want me to use my influence to help them and one of the things I want to say to you uh, who are watching this right now, and I know many of you, some of you may be on YouTube, but others, you're endtimes.com subscribers. I, I just want to say to you, please help me in whatever influence you have to let people know that October 7th was real. And it, uh, it, it was real. It actually happened. Babies were beheaded. Old people were killed. Young people were killed. Women were raped. These hostages were taken. It was, it was a shocking uh, demonstration of just uh, barbarianism that happened on October 7th. Israel didn't do it, 
and it actually happened. Those are the two things we need to let people know. And I told you a couple of weeks ago that there was a pro-Palestinian demonstration less than a mile from my house. And it was shocking to me. I was driving down the street with my granddaughters. They had taken me out to eat lunch. And we were driving down the street and we saw all this commotion up here on the side of the road and we drove up there and it was about a hundred people, but more people were walking in from every direction and they were waving pro-Palestinian flags and shouting that Israel was committing genocide in Gaza uh, and that Israel was an apartheid state. And so all these kinds of things. It was shocking to me that it was happening in my neighborhood. The other thing that was shocking to me is how many cars were passing by honking in support of them. And this is what's happening. It's very popular uh, to be pro-Palestinian right now. Uh, President Biden was giving a speech yesterday and he was interrupted over a dozen times by these pro-Palestinian demonstrators that were demanding that they stop the, uh, that they call for a ceasefire in Gaza. And so this, this nuttiness that's going on, this anti-Semitism that's going on right now, it's one of the major end time signs because Zechariah 12, Joel chapter 3, both say that at the very end, all the world will march against Jerusalem. All the world will march against Israel. That's Armageddon. And so, you know, in the past, we've seen anti-Semitism. We've seen it raise its head. But some people would say, and many people have said to me through the years, Jimmy, are you really telling me that this tiny little nation in the Middle East, the size of New Jersey, would be so badly hated that the nations of the world would march against them? And that seemed a little illogical, maybe far-fetched a year ago. Right now, you can see it happening. And so th this is an article here. So I'm asking you, first of all, pray for me uh, and the other leaders there. Pray for Israel uh, in the midst of all of this deception, all this anti-Semitism. Uh, but I'm asking you to pray for Israel and use whatever influence you have to let people know that this is real. It was done by Hamas and not by the Israelis. Just, just whatever influence you might have, it might be at school, it might be at work, it may be with your friends, it may be with your family, or whatever, it may be online in social media. You stand on behalf of Israel. God says, I'll bless those who bless you, I'll curse those who curse you. And that promise is still true to this day. So let's be among the people who stand with Israel, blessing them and supporting them. But I'm talking about uh, the nation of Israel, what's happening right now in the world. There's a, this is an article and the headline is, EU threatens consequences for Israel's opposition to Palestinian state. Consequences. Now, I read to you, this is, this is a guy that I'm going to mention here in a minute that I've read to you before. His name is Joseph Borrell. Uh, and it says, EU diplomats said on Monday in Brussels that a two-state solution is the only credible path to peace between Israel and the Palestinians after earlier threatening consequences, quote, consequences, if Israel continued to oppose the plan, we have to stop talking about the peace process and start talking about the two-state solution process. Joseph Borrell, the EU's high representative for foreign affairs, told press at, at a meeting at the Council of the European Union's Foreign Affairs Committee. Now, you remember I read this article a couple of weeks ago. He's calling for forced two-state solution. This is, this is Armageddon. This is what happens when the world marches against Israel to try to force them into a two-state solution. Now, it's going to happen someday. Now, I've been saying to you, there's going to be wars and all the, all the pressure that's happening right now worldwide. The world, the Biden administration, the, the America, the EU, the United Nations, International Criminal Court, they're all trying to pressure Israel into this two-state solution. It's not going to happen. And Benjamin Netanyahu has been very, very specific about the fact he's not going for it. And so this is another, this is an opinion piece now in the Jerusalem Post. And it's by Linda Allen. And she says, after eight years, 18, after 18 years of abuse of power, Palestinians are undeserving of self-rule in Gaza. And so 18 years of abuse of power, the Hamas was, their, their purpose was to destroy Israel. That's why they broke off from Fatah and the Palestinian Authority is Fatah and the Palestinian Authority, uh, you know, through the Oslo Accords, they recognized Israel's right to exist. Now, they've never really followed through on that in any practical way, but they recognized Israel's right to exist. Hamas would not recognize Israel's right to exist. And they existed for the purpose of destroying Israel. That's why Iran pumped hundreds of millions of dollars in there for them to build 500 miles of tunnels underneath. And this is an interesting thing. 
and Larry Huck said this on the show a couple of weeks ago, they have 500 miles of tunnels under Gaza, but they don't have one bunker for their citizens to hide in if there's an attack. And so they're all for the soldiers, they're all for the military, and they have used Gaza as a military installation to attack and destroy Israel. That's why Israel built a fence around it because they had to protect themselves from Hamas because Hamas's intentions since 2005 have always been evil toward Israel. And what they're saying is because of the abuse of power, Hamas abused their own citizens. Hamas used their power to just try to destroy Israel. And so uh, Benjamin Netanyahu said, we're gonna go in and finish our operation in Gaza. We're gonna destroy Hamas and we will have a security force in Gaza from now on to make sure that they don't do this again. Now, the, this Joseph Borrell, EU, he's saying there's gonna be consequences if you continue to resist this. They're going to resist this. And let me tell you why they're gonna resist this. In 2005, under the George W. Bush administration, we forced Israel out of Gaza. Interestingly, five days later, Hurricane Katrina hit the Gulf Coast, the costliest natural disaster in American history up to that point in time. And immediately Jewish rabbis came out and said, that's because you forced us out of our land. That's what Joel 3 says, is that God is gonna come into judgment with the nations on account of what they've done with Israel and they've divided up his land. So the United States in this land for peace operation, we forced Israel out of Gaza. Gaza is a lucrative piece of land on the Mediterranean. It is unbelievably fertile. It is. It, it could be a Singapore. It could be the incredible uh, you know, piece of property under the right hands. But Gaza's used it just for, for war purposes. And so in 2005, we forced Israel out with the promise of peace. If you give, they just want land. They just want land. And if you'll give them this land, you're gonna have peace. Well, what happened? The most incredible demonstration of savagery on October 7th because of the United States and the United Nations forcing Israel to give up this land in the name of peace. And now we see this carnage. And the most amazing thing is, rather than the world rallying behind Israel, many Christians have rallied behind Israel, the world has turned against Israel. And now they're condemning Israel and they're saying this is genocide. Genocide is when you wipe out a group of people. There are two million residents of Gaza Right now, the last death toll I heard of the Israelis killing Hamas, and there's been some citizens that died, was 24,000. Okay, well, that's a little over 1%. That's, that's, uh, if, genocide is 100%. You go in and you just kill people. The Israelis have done everything they can to preserve life. It's Hamas that has built their military installations under nurseries, preschools, elementary schools, hospitals, and in residential neighborhood. They use their people as a shield. The Israelis don't do that. The Israelis protect their citizens and the Palestinian citizens. They don't go in and just carelessly kill uh, civilians. And that's why the, the Biden administration has supported the operation in Gaza until now. And so when people are saying the word genocide, they don't know what the word genocide said. The International Criminal Court right now has Israel on trial for genocide. And it, what Israel said to the International Criminal Court is, you know, find out what the word genocide means. The Israelis could kill every person in Gaza in one morning. It wouldn't even take them to noon to do it. They've got the military capability and power. They could kill them all. And so if they were committing genocide, they would just do it in one day and get it over with. They are very carefully trying to find the military installations and the Hamas terrorists and to kill them and to destroy them without harming the citizens. So this issue of genocide is nonsense. Then they're also saying that Israel is an apartheid state. Okay, apartheid, and we know that from South Africa, because in South Africa, before Nelson Mandela, only white people could rule in South Africa. That's apartheid. Apartheid means one group of people are in control and everyone else is excluded and they don't get control. That's apartheid, okay? Did you realize that 30% of, of Israeli citizens are non-Jews? Uh, we saw yesterday on, you know, Brian Schrager interviewed this, uh, this Arab journalist, and he was talking about there's two million Arab Israeli citizens. The Knesset is their government. It is a, it is a democratic government in Israel. Uh, most governments in the Middle East are all dictatorial. And so they have a representative democratic government made up of Jews, Arabs, Muslims, and Christians. That's not apartheid. 
apartheid means only Jews can be in control. If, if Israel was an apartheid state, they wouldn't allow a representative government of non-Jews being in control. But they have Jews, non-Jews, Arabs, Muslims, a part of the government voting every time there's a vote. That's the government of Israel. So genocide, apartheid, saying that October 7th didn't happen, or if it did happen, it was orchestrated by the Jews. All of these are lies. And see, that's all the devil has. All the devil has is, are, are, are lies. And so what we're saying is the purpose of what we do here on Tipping Point and EndTimes.com is to help people understand the truth about what's going on. You know, here, what's going on right now is this worldwide pressure um, of trying to force the Jews again after the insanity of 2005 and forcing them out of Gaza and what's happened now. We're trying to force them again to give up Gaza, East Jerusalem, and the West Bank to the Palestinians and the Palestinian Authority. And so they're saying, we're not going to do it. We're just, it's just not going to happen. And so jo Joseph Borrell of the EU said, let's, let's do it forcibly. Let's force them to do it. This, this will happen one day. Okay, the United Nations hates Israel. The United Nations has censored Israel more than all other nations of the world combined. They hate Israel. And I've said this before. They should be called the anti-Israel club. They hate Israel. And that's because all the nations of the world are turning against Israel. Thank God that the United States has helped uh, Israel militarily and have stood with them during this time. However, we are trying to force them into a two-state solution. And Anthony Blinken, our Secretary of State, visited Saudi Arabia last week, and Saudi Arabia said, uh, we would like to normalize relationship with Israel, but it will require them entering into a two-state solution. And Anthony Blinken told uh, the Saudi Arabia, yes, that's what we're working toward. We're, we're, we're getting there. We're about to have a two-state solution. And uh, Benjamin Netanyahu came out and said, we're not entering into a two-state solution. We're not doing that again. We've already, we've already done that, and it doesn't work. We're not going to do that. So I believe where we are right now is worldwide anti-Semitism, worldwide pressure on Israel to give up the West Bank, East Jerusalem, uh, and the Gaza Strip, which they're not going to do. I believe that an Antichrist figure is going to step onto the scene. When I say soon, it could be 10 years from now. 20 years from now, I, I don't see that happening. I'm, at some point in time, the Bible says that there's going to be this brilliant orator and brilliant uh, tactician that steps onto the world scene and makes a deal with Israel. That's Daniel chapter 9, that he confirms a covenant with Israel for seven years. And in the middle of the covenant, he breaks that covenant. He goes into the rebuilt temple in Israel and proclaims himself God. He's the Antichrist. Now, he won't show up as the Antichrist. He's going to show up as a brilliant answer man. And he's going to enter into a covenant with Israel that they think is a peace covenant. And they think is the answer. The world is going to celebrate the Antichrist. They're going to celebrate someone finally, you know, made peace in the Middle East, something that something no one else has been able to do. He's done it. But in the middle of the covenant, he's going to break that covenant and all hell will break loose. The Bible tells us in Zechariah, uh, 12, 13, 14, that two thirds of the Jews will die. Uh, Jesus called it the great tribulation. He said there's going to be the abomination of desolation. He said, then there will be great tribulation on the earth. So much so that if those days had not been cut short, no flesh would have survived. Listen, if you want to support us here at endtimes.com, there's two ways you can do it. One is by becoming a subscriber, $7 a month. You get the full tipping point show every week without advertisements. Plus, all the other podcasts and information that we have, we have updates from Israel every week. Dr. Mark Hitchcock has a teaching, a podcast every week, all kinds of things that we do. I answer questions. I bring a devotional every week, $7 a month. You can also give to us. You can go to endtimes.com right now. There's a donate button and just give a gift. Nothing is too small. Nothing is too large. And you can give a recurring gift. It's a huge blessing to us because we're, we're in a war. Uh, in the world right now spiritually. This is a very severe time. And I believe the most important message in the world right now is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we preach the gospel and people get saved through this show. But also we have our Tipping Point Conference coming up, our Prophecy Conference coming up September 20th and 21st. The tickets are on sale right now. We have tickets. You can come physically. We also have live streaming that's available. Go to conference.endtimes.com. This is going to be a Friday night and all day Saturday, we're adding the Friday night. 
And we have Pastor Jack Hibbs. A lot of you are familiar with Jack Hibbs. He's very well known, has a television show uh, that's on all the time. And a lot of you have been asking for us to have him. So he's coming to be a part. He'll be our keynote speaker on Friday night. I'll be there. Dr. Mark Hitchcock, uh, Pastor Ed Young, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn, of course, Billy Crone will be there also. We have a big lineup and we have coming this year, Max Licato. Max is a dear friend of mine. He is the number one best-selling Christian author of all times. His books have sold more copies than any other books except the Bible. He is a brilliant teacher and he's going to be teaching. He's written books and speaks on the end times. You're going to want to hear him. He's, he's going to be fascinating. So we've got a great lineup of speakers. I want you to be a part of it. So go right now to conference.endtimes.com. You can select your seat there. 